what I'm realizing is that <laughs> if you took this all away, I just live in the 1850s. I don't have any knowledge. Yeah, I know. I know to you mean. recreate modern day. I feel like that. There's nothing I can. My contribute. I'm a caveman basically, who's been given iPhones and yeah. medicine and clothes. Like <laughs> I know absolutely, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah. But I've contributed nothing to the world. Yeah, like I don't know how to. If 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 you take away the shit, I don't know how to rebuild it. No. I don't know. It, like some people do. Some people are like, "Oh, my phone broke. I'll fix my phone." Yeah. If my phone breaks, I'm like, "Yeah, I don't have a phone now." We've got a podcast. How how horrific is that? Year is with Red and Bobby. Welcome back to the Year is podcast, the podcast where every episode, me comedian Bobby Mayer and me comedian Red Richardson, we travel back to a year in history. We talk about the weirdest, the most interesting, the strangest things from that year. And yeah, when we started, did we think after a while this will get boring? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not boring, but there's a lot of years, it turns yes, there out. There is a lot of years, yeah. There, it, There is a lot. Yeah. We used to say we do a deep dive in the year. I don't think you can call it. I think it's more of a... A skim. Yeah, it's we dip our toes into well, a year. <laughs> well, we're, we're more self-effacing about our, our, our skill level, really, yeah. when it comes to history. We can't pretend for too long. I was listening to a podcast, and someone said it was... Um, this guy said, oh, we do a real deep dive into it. And they, they did, there was like 12 episodes on the set. Went, <laughs> we say that. Yeah, yeah, we... <laughs> You could, yeah, you could write a, you could write a whole book about a year in history. Yeah, more, more, yeah. Than, more than one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. I mean, there's entire Wikipedia pages about a year in history. So I've, I've never read as Wikipedia. we've discovered. <laughs> but yes, um, how's your Fanta? Mm-hmm. It's not in a can today. Bobby brought me in a glass with it, with Fanta in it, which I'm. Suspicious of, because I don't like to drink anything that's not sealed when given to me by you. What do you think I'm going to do? Drug you so you stop clearing your throat constantly La- throughout the recording? Laxatives, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. You to shit yourself in my house. Mm-hmm. Or, that's um, my real dream. GHB, and you and Jody might... Okay, we're going to cut that out. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Taking it down a weird path really well, early. You, you, you know, you, you were asking what I was afraid of, and I told you. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're afraid of. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't want to drink. I'm going to go to Portsmouth tonight, so. Right, in two weeks, mm. we're going to reveal Jody's face on the podcast. We've had a few submissions as well. Yeah, of what people think Jody yeah. looks like. Someone sent a picture of, like, a serial killer, like an actual, what was, who was the guy? Oh, someone sent a picture, a photo of Mussolini. Oh, it was Mussolini, yeah, that was yeah. it. You, you, I didn't think you looked like him, to be honest. Fair enough. But There's other people you could look more like. But all will be revealed in two weeks' time. How was your week, though? Not bad. What have I done? Not much. Um, got a bad back. Don't know why. I think it's from lying down too much. It might be the shape of the body and what you don't do, exercise. Uh, no, I don't think it's that. <laughs> I think it's those two things together. It's lack of exercise, pain. bad body shape. Mid back pain. Um, just been gigging. Yeah, I know. I know. Standing on stage for twenty minutes can really fuck That's up your hard. back. Uh, no, I walk to gigs. You, you, you drive, which is bad. Oh yeah, I'm sure when you have a gig in Essex, you fucking walk there. What are you no, talking I'm, I'm about? No, I'm driving to Portsmouth tonight. And that should be fine. <laughs> You, um, you, you just contradicted yourself. You said no, I but if it's in gigs. London, most of my gigs are in London, so I'll walk to the tube and then get on the tube. Oh, so there is, okay. there is exercise involved. I'd say, I walk to the car, we all walk. I'd say 10,000 steps a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's done, but you need to do more. But you've hurt your back. Yes, that's all that's happened. What about you? My back hasn't hurt since I've been doing my daily workouts. Yeah, okay. What did your back used to hurt? Yeah, all the time, constant pain. Are you actually being serious? No. Mm-hmm. Are yeah, you? Constant pain. Yeah. My shoulder kept just falling out of place. Oh, uh, yeah. But now I do a daily workout. Mm-hmm. No more pain. No. What's your daily workout? Today was core. Mm-hmm. And I've been really ill, so I just I did about half what I'd usually do. Mm. So just like 50 sit-ups. I usually would do core and push-ups together. So I do like 70 sit-ups and like 50 push-ups. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. We were just talking the other week, and you were talking about how much pain you were in, and I realized... I don't want to be in pain. Mm. And then I thought, I need to make a change. Yeah. You, you're like a ghost of Christmas future for me. D- didn't you piss yourself? That was unrelated. <laughs> okay. 
so I had a flu. And apparently, according to Google, sometimes when you're really ill, <laughs> you're... So, what if you're full? No, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes when you're really ill, your body just like is trying to flush out toxins. So it kind of dehydrates you and puts it just all the water in your body. Your body just goes, okay, we got to get rid of this. <laughs> yep. And I didn't know that my urge to piss would be a lot stronger than usual. So I was driving. I thought, I have to piss. But I thought, oh, whatever. I'll just do it when I get there. And then immediately it was like, I'm going to piss myself. Yeah, yeah. So I was driving. This happened twice. The first time it happened, uh, I tried to piss in a bottle while driving. Mm-hmm. And but it was like a Coke bottle and no one's penis fits in a Coke bottle. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't possible. So I'm sitting down. So I'm just going to piss all over myself. So I'm like, I won't work. I find a lip the nice tea bottle. Mm-hmm. That's a dick sized hole, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's full. So you're just scrambling around your floor. I love that you got so many empty bottles. I know, in your I know, car. I had a pile of empty bottles. <laughs> Real choice. <laughs> so then I find, I find. I, 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 obviously, I could drink the Lipton iced tea, but that's not going to help. So I dump it out the window. <laughs> that's, the fact you didn't crash doing all this is impressive. I, it was a traffic jam. Oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> but, but then I, I slide... <laughs> I slide my penis inside the bottle, but then just because of the angle of how I'm sitting, I still can't piss. Yeah. But I could piss myself, but I can't piss into the bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like, okay, I can't. I can't. I'm still driving. Still driving. It's like I'm going to piss. Mm-hmm. So I pull over on the hard shoulder, piss on the hard shoulder. Mm-hmm. Okay, crisis averted. And I was also running late for the gig, so I made it to the gig with like two minutes because I was driving to Cardiff. And what I didn't realize was there's a rugby Ah, thing yeah, in Cardiff, the, and yeah. 50,000 people were also going into Cardiff. Yeah. So then two days later, feeling a bit better, but still ill. I'm driving the kid home, mm-hmm. but I think I have to piss. And I'm like, whatever. It's not, you know, mm-hmm. I feel better now. It'll be fine. I'll just piss when I get home. Big mistake. Yeah. As I'm turning the corner to go down my road, I just start pissing myself. Fuck. Well, at least it was that way around, not on the way to the gig. Yeah. And... <laughs> I'm just pissing myself. I, I didn't have a choice. I was like, I'm just going to piss myself. Yeah. And uh, I pissed myself a bit, then stopped, then stopped the car, got out, and just pissed on the side of a road in the middle of the day. And luckily, there was no pedestrians, like, really nearby. Which road was this? Near here? Yeah, my road. Like, right outside the house. Shit. Oh, I'd, what would have been great is if your uh, parents' WhatsApp group were <laughs> We're having a group walk. Oh my god! It and was you're just so, there holding your baby, pissing against so the wall. It was so embarrassing, Red. <laughs> Where about? Because there's no real spots that like. There's, I just pissed on the road. There was no Fuck. cover. Fuck. I just if someone looked out the window, they would have just saw my penis pissing. But that close to home, you may as well just pissed yourself. No, but there was a like. It was a lot. So mm. if I would have pissed myself, I pissed myself a little in the car. <laughs> Yeah, I was covered in piss. But if I would have pissed myself in the car, it would have been soaked. The car would have been soaked in piss. And the worst thing is, if Harriet got into it and it smells of piss, you'd have to blame Mabel? Uh, No, I told her. Mm. I just told her. Mm -hmm. She had sympathy because... Yeah. I didn't mean to. No. (laughs) She wouldn't have sympathy. What would you have done if you pissed yourself on the way to the gig and you had no trousers, but you need the money, obviously? I did. The (laughs) thing is, I I also... uh, For the gig, I only brought one pair of jeans. Yeah. So if I would have pissed myself on the way to the gig, I would have just had to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm covered in piss and I'm going to go on stage. I just, why would you bring a spare pair of jeans? How would you have opened with a giant piss patch? I would have said, I would have told the story covered in piss. Guys, I'm covered in piss. I wouldn't normally go on stage, but I need the money. (laughs) That's exactly how I would have started. And I don't lose money because I drove here. I told the story when I got there. They appreciated, you know. Yeah. But it was it was chaos. Yeah, that does. Now I'm good. worried. Every time I need to piss, I'm like, "Oh God, is it going to happen again?" Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. There we go. <laughs> what year are we going back to today, Bobby? Well, I've done a lot of research. Yeah, I wanted to find a year, a year that kind of reflected how we're feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, and I found 1856. Okay. So kind of right before the Civil War in America. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's where we're going back to. Yeah, because people are saying they don't miss, but some people go, oh, there could be another civil war in America because it's so divided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's not as uh, geographically cut and dry as it was. You no. know, it's not north south. So it's like, well, Austin will go this way. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be this weird. It would like, just be, well, it'd just be anarchy. Yeah, 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 basically. But they've got enough guns for it. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. 
did you know, in 1856, Mm -hmm. James Harrison produced the world's first practical ice-making machine and refrigerator using the principle of vapor compression in Australia. No, I didn't know that. If there was ever a place where you would be inspired to invent the fridge, yeah, <laughs> it's Australia. So this is for, so an ice making machine. It's not. I, I, yeah. I literally thought it meant like you know the ones that you you know when you go to someone really rich's house and they on the fridge they got the and you just get ice in your glass. I it's think, not that, is it? Well, you made something that can cool down water okay. into ice, but it's not like. Well, I don't think the first version. Yeah. Of the invention would was shoot the, the ice into a cup. <laughs> no, that maybe came like, maybe like the you know the, like the iPhone three <laughs> of ice makers. They shot the ice yeah, yeah. out of a hole before like cars or planes or any of these. Like, well, I'm gonna walk into town to go pick up my mule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got an ice machine, but there's barely any medicine. Australia's a good place for that. Yeah, yeah, it makes you think, how can I make it colder? Mm, mm, mm. He was a fascinating guy. He was Scottish, James Harrison. Okay, Scottish are very good at inventing stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. In 1873, that was a while later, he won a gold medal at the Melbourne Exhibition, which I guess is like a science exhibition in Australia. Yeah. By proving that meat kept frozen for months remains perfectly edible. Yeah. Who wants to be the one to test that, though, you know? Mm. Because well, before that, you eat like two week old meat and you die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, they used to salt it and put it in the outhouse, didn't they? Yeah, but and this I think you is... could save that for like six months. But this wasn't salted. Yeah, but this was the first guy's like, if you keep it cold for mm-hmm. a long time, it's going to be you all can right. still eat it. He yeah. probably didn't even understand the science behind why that was true. He just mm-hmm. like noticed it was true that things that when you freeze food, it wasn't decaying. Mm-hmm. And then well, you could see that with bodies. Probably, you know? Yeah, if you freeze a body, you can still fuck it for longer. But if you've ever been to war <laughs> in the snow, you go, well, that he, you know, they freeze and they don't decay in the same way. Yeah. So. You can still eat them. Anyone who went, well, it's weird in Russia when you kill someone, doesn't stink as much yeah. as quickly, you know? Yeah. So maybe that was a cross-pollination of ideas. <laughs> they think this guy's been to, to war in Russia. <laughs> well. You know, just people mixing, swapping stories. That's how it happens. So, yeah, but what? So what's crazy is before that, they would import ice from the U.S. and Norway for I- use in ice houses where people would store ice. So you'd have to... You'd bring ice. <laughs> sail. Halfway on, around the world. You'd do an ice run, but free... free Because <laughs> even in this country, in a heat wave, I've gone like to the shops and bought ice. Yeah. But you still, you have to get home pretty quickly. Yeah. But they, no, they're not. They're, they'd like get half a glacier and bring mm. it from fucking Norway. And what, like, so if it melts, then you have to sort of skirt round by the Antarctic fire New Zealand just to refreeze it again. It would just be, what would be so annoying, though, mm. is you, okay, that's your thing you're doing this year. You're going to Norway, then you're going to Australia mm-hmm. for the ice. It's the 1840s. You get your ice. You're coming back heat wave hits yeah by the time you get back there's no ice the thing is though if before the fridge they had to do this yeah what a century they're taking the stuff over in is a fridge so maybe the scottish guy didn't invent the fridge no it wasn't a fridge it was just a container a container of ice yeah a that container ca- of ice is not a fridge but what is it well no it's a cup otherwise it would melt that's so- like saying a glass of ice is a fridge no it would melt if it wasn't a fridge. No, that's not obviously your well, role. A, a fridge is a box with a temperature that keeps things cool. That's obviously what they brought it yeah, in. Yeah, but then a cooler, do you know what a cooler is? Yes. That's like a, a container you can put ice in and it, mm. it keeps the ice cold for longer. Not for three weeks. Obviously you're wrong. No. Because that's how they imported ice and the fridge they just didn't, didn't call exist. it a fridge. They didn't call it a fridge. You're wrong. No, it I'm wasn't not. a fridge. It was a freezer. Because otherwise the ice would have melted. No. You, have you, let's get an ice cube out now and see how long it lasts. It won't last the podcast, let alone Norway so to the Australia. the ice trade was known as the frozen water trade. Exactly. 19... It's a fridge. It's not a fridge. <laughs> a guy just patented it. Otherwise no. the ice isn't getting over there. No, it's not a fridge. <laughs> what is it then? It's not a microwave. I'll find out because I know you're wrong again. No, it just, there's no way you could get 
maybe they didn't realize they were making a fridge, but they had a fridge. A fridge is a fridge is an electrical appliance. A fridge is a box that keeps... A fridge is not a box. A box that keeps something cool mm. is a cooler. Okay. A fridge that see, keeps something cool because it's plugged into an elect... Because it has electricity but that's, is a fridge. That's now. Back back then, they, they were... You know, it's, it was the start of it. Okay. So there's just... There's no way, unless you have a freezer, you could get stuff from Norway to Australia by boat unless you have a freezer. They had one. They just didn't know it. Well, they did know if they if, they didn't, know, they didn't know it. If they because had it, they knew it. They didn't know. They were like, "Well, we don't." And then the guy goes, "I've invented this thing." Keeps it, and they go, "Oh." And you go, "What do you think you guys were doing for how how long to sail from Australia to Norway and back?" Okay, in those days? so so ice was cut from the surface of ponds and streams. Okay, that's how they got it. Mm -hmm. Then stored in ice houses. So you're saying an ice house is a fridge? An ice house is a building used to store ice throughout the year, commonly used prior to the invention of the refrigerator. It's a fridge. It's not a fridge. It is indeed. It's an ice house. Well, okay, if I if you said to me, Red, um I, I you know, I would happily put a can of Coke in an ice house and it would have the same effect as a fridge. During the winter, ice and snow would be cut from lakes or rivers, taken into the ice house and packed with insulation often straw or sawdust. So they packed things around it Sounds like to an prevent ancient fridge. heat from getting in. Exactly. Sounds like an ancient fridge. A fridge <laughs> is a fridge. This is an ice house. An it's ancient a fridge. I would have, you know, I'd have an ice house now. I would do the same job. Basically, it's, it's a space that maintains the temperature so you can keep something cold. That's what a fridge is. Ice house is the same thing. You're using... You I think the guy who invented the ice house has been gaslit by this Scottish con man in Australia. And why was he in Australia in the first place in that time? But what this... The, was the, he there for fraud? But what... Had he been <laughs> fraudulent and so they'd sent him to Australia? But James Harris... And he's at it again. James Harris's <laughs> invention, what it allowed people to do is to make ice. Okay. So he invented the ice machine for drinks. <laughs> no, but what you don't understand <laughs> is that if you have water, right? Mm. <laughs> and then you have a fridge. Yeah. Then you can make ice. Yeah. Before that, because they didn't actually have a fridge, they did not have the capacity to cool down water and turn it into ice. Okay. Let me get. Let me. How do you this. have a butt? Let to me this. ask you this: If you if you had a cup of water and you put it in the ice house, what do you think would happen to it, Bobby? It actually just stayed a cup of water. The ice house was no, not it that would cold. Freeze. Of course, it's that cold. It's the ice house. No, it's the house <laughs> they put ice in. Yeah, and it doesn't melt because it's so cold. It doesn't melt because they pack it with insulation to prevent heat from getting mm, in. Sure. Okay, and that makes a cold environment. Anyway. But not cold Would you enough. lie in an ice house? What do you think would happen to you? I would not. You would freeze. To freeze water, freeze. it needs to be... Okay. <laughs> Agree you... to disagree. <laughs> Don't steal my phrase. <laughs> James Harris, inventor of the slushy. <laughs> Con man. Wonder what he's up to in England. They got this. James Harrison. <laughs> James Harrison. Give the man who would think every time you eat meat, it's mm. because of James. <laughs> it's not. It is. It's because of Ronald McDonough. It, uh, thanks, James. Yes, he's a great guy. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out how he died. That's actually nice. You know what? Mm. Wikipedia doesn't say how he died. It's a mystery. That's not nice at all. No, it is. Well, he was murdered. By the inventor of the ice house. <laughs> to prove that he didn't invent f uh, fridges, he stuck him in his own ice house and he froze to death and died. And he said, look, see? But the ice house couldn't make... You're never going to understand this. is basic science, but let's just move on, okay? Should we move on? <laughs> Have you ever been right? <laughs> Many, many times. <laughs> like, do you remember? On, it? We've recorded me being right about, we've got about 55 hours of it for anyone who wants to listen. Okay. Plus, bonus right me as well on the I Patreon. I think sometimes <laughs> on the Patreon you are right, actually. Why? Because I want people to subscribe to the Patreon. Oh, That's really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I no, think no. sometimes on the Patreon you're right. Sometimes on the Patreon you mm -hmm. have great points. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you want to hear Red say intelligent things that only happens in the patron episodes for some reason on the regular episodes he's a complete fucking idiot <laughs> but on the patron episodes he comes to life 
with this insight where you think, am I talking to... I'm coasting on these ones. Am I talking to one of humanity's greatest minds? Mm-hmm. You can learn a lot about yourself. Talking to you. Talk, listening to me talk. And you can learn about how to make your life better. You can learn about uh, making millions in Bitcoin. All on the Patreon. Sick of your, uh, your partner? Get a better one. Listen to the Patreon. Life advice. It's not really... Yeah, it we is. We had someone subscribe three weeks ago. And they now have a Ferrari. So yeah, that's true. The, fa- the facts are there. They stole a Ferrari. They're in jail now. Mm, but yeah. Doesn't matter. Then for, for three hours, they had the best time of their life. Yeah. Right. What's next, Bobby? The fridge magnet was invented. We had a gig the other day. <laughs> I did your gig. Mm-hmm. And everyone had great gigs. Mm-hmm. And then you were on stage. Mm-hmm. And then that guy fucked your set. Mm-hmm. What did he do? He kept saying... He interrupted you. And he goes, carry on, carry on. Mm -hmm. And he kept telling you, carry on. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the equivalent of that is on a podcast saying, what's next, Bobby? Uh, No, I'm just rolling it along. It's broadcasting his smooth way into the next segment. Well, no, no. Okay, I'll just sit here in silence and then wait for you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, let's go. (laughs) Just enjoy the silence. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. 20 people have paused. No, they haven't paused. They're just thinking. logged off, 50 unsubscribed, 100 unsubscribed, 300 no longer listening again. No, 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 no. You don't really understand. 200 uh, no patrons anymore. Okay. A thousand patrons have just unsubscribed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. In 1856, American mercenary William Walker effectively takes control of Nicaragua. Now, William Walker historically, is a horrible person. Pro-slavery, he just went into Central America and he took over Nicaragua. Yeah. But it didn't really go his way. He published a book in 1860 called The War in Nicaragua, Mm -hmm. which cast his efforts to conquer Central America as tied to the geographical expansion of slavery. Walker sought to gain renewed support from pro-slaver forces in the southern United States on the eve of the Civil War. Then he went back to Central America mm-hmm. to keep trying to take it over, thinking it's going to go great because he's like, I want to enslave these people. Yeah. But the British Navy handed him over to the government of Honduras. Who executed him? Fuck. That's not a good end. No. Why did he go back? Well, he just thought he'd be welcomed as a... Well, no, but he just thought he could like be like, hey, guys, let's go take over these people. Mm-mm-mm. And he looks like a little fucking dweeb, too. And what you did is just take him back to Nicaragua. Pointy shot little in the head. face. What's crazy is he was a physician. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like I'm a trained doctor. But I guess a trained doctor in the 1800s is like, I know how to tell someone you're not going to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the key skill <laughs> to being a doctor <laughs> in the 1800s is saying, you're going to make it. Or All bad amputations and stuff. Oh, I mean, I think we could all do the sawing off of limbs. In films, you always see it's like guy with no leg and you go he probably just had like a, a bad knee or something you know and they just cut it off yeah 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 he just needed physio like med- you remember um, with the flu if you had the flu uh, back in the day they'd uh because you were hot and sweating so they'd put your bed outside <laughs> do they, so you do they? so because they go oh he's hot Let's Make take him, him outside, yeah. That's Not cool. understanding that the body mm. is heating up to try to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill. And so people just die. But it makes sense if you think about it. If you've got no something not much science, you go, yeah. Well, if he's hot, get make him cold. So annoying to be like of like you know, like my level of intelligence in twenty twenty two doesn't just take me to the top. Mm. But if I just went back to the eighteen fifties with what I know now, mm-hmm. I could revolutionize shit. Well, no, because you'd know what it was, but you wouldn't know how to do it. I you'd would, essentially though. be someone run, 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 like now going, we should have hoverboards. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cool. Do you know what I mean? What if we had a chip in our brain that like cured cancer? Yeah, I'd be like Wicked. Elon Musk. Yeah. I'd be big thinking. Basically Elon Musk. And then really you just buy whatever Twitter was back then, some <laughs> fucking rag paper, <laughs> and become a horrible <laughs> lord. <laughs> You wouldn't help at all. No. You'd own slaves within a week. (laughs) No, I wouldn't. You'd be like, you didn't understand. It's different then. (laughs) But you know what I mean? What would you tell them? You go, you know, a a laptop 
It's a computer. But how would you explain stuff to people? I would. I mean, I'd start simple. I'd mm. say, hey, guys, penicillin. And they go, what's that? And you go, it's well, I'd look up how to make it before I went back. Yeah, okay. You'd have to do a lot of Googling before you went back. Yeah, you could go you back. You forget an ingredient for everything. So, what are the big inventions, you... 1850s, that you take back the game? Mm-hmm. Penicillin. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That saves a lot of lives. The idea I be- of antibiotics. I bet you forget the one thing that made it work. No, no. I you could... just, ended up killing like 3,000 people. <laughs> I, could, I could make penicillin. <laughs> I could figure that out. Serial killer. So, there's penicillin. <laughs> Who claimed to be from the future? You'd be John Jones, Jim Jones, or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be Jim Jones. <laughs> Yeah, penicillin. What else? What else could you take back that you could like learn how to do that could help? Rosé wine. <laughs> they, you say, I think they probably had wine. Yeah, but not rose. Well, maybe in France they probably. Um, okay, penicillin. Um, what's good? Oyster cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Most of our listeners don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, no, it's use. Well, unless you, if you're listening in America, which we do have quite a big American, I was looking at our geographic. Mm. You know, no one in the Ukraine has listened to this podcast. Still, that, that makes sense. Not one person has <laughs> listened to this podcast. In if the I was in the Ukraine and mm. I just had to hear two fucks mm. just like jokingly talking about war, while I was like, you know, it might like, give you some levity and make you feel a bit better. I'm not sure it would. Also, we do a lot of key historical that you know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they could learn. They could learn about where Putin's coming from. To well, learn he's leaving. Um, he's having to back out of that city as well. It's really tasty. It's really good. But then China is saying, we're preparing for war. So they're obviously going to go to Taiwan, aren't they? Nah, China's... Uh, I think they'll just... Oh, you think they're bluffing? Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, I think they're bluffing. Yeah, so what we take back penicillin. China's whole economy is based off... The West. Yeah, they, yeah, we buy all their shit. We need each other. Like this plastic cup. Yeah. yeah. Laced with brick and milk. <laughs> Tamagotchis, you take them back. That might be fun for people. Victorian kids, they had a hard time. You go, look, I know you've... You can take back basic facts like... Um, Human rights. <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying to think. Fuck. I wish I was smarter. Because mm. there's got to be like I 10... Do too. <laughs> Don't you just edit out all the thinking time? <laughs> what can we take back? Um, ovens. I couldn't build an oven. No, though. you couldn't. What's a good? It's, it'd have to be medicine, wouldn't it? But penicillin, vitamin D tablets. But then you get that from other places. <laughs> so fine from being outside. Yeah. Yo-yos. What, One. I, what I'm realizing is that. <laughs> If you took this all away, I'd just live in the 1850s. I don't have any knowledge. Yeah, I know. I know to you recreate mean. modern day. I feel like that. There's nothing I've can. My contribute. I'm a caveman basically, who's been given iPhones and yeah. medicine and clothes. Like <laughs> I know absolutely it's bad, isn't it? Yeah. But I've contributed nothing to the world. Yeah, like I don't know how to. If 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 you take away the shit, I don't know how to rebuild it. No. I don't know. It, like some people do. Some people are like, oh, my phone broke. I'll fix my phone. Yeah. If my phone breaks, I'm like, yeah, I don't have a phone now. We've got a podcast. How how horrific is that? Yeah, we don't <laughs> even know how that works. Jody does. Jody does. But like what we're contributing is this. It's like, oh, yeah, you you have a... Back in the day, men would just go fishing and never talk about how <laughs> they hated themselves. Yeah. Well, they they have affairs because they now all the self respect. Now we just do podcasts. The fishermen realize they're neurodiverse. They're like, I think I'm on the spectrum. I'm going to talk. I'm going to do a podcast. I I realize the reason I'm obsessed with fish is because I'm neurodiverse. Do you know Spencer Matthews from Made in Chelsea has three podcasts? Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> did... And it's number two in the world behind Alistair Campbell, War Criminal. That's not the world. That's the UK. In the UK, but Alistair Campbell, War Criminal, number one podcast. Alleged war criminal. It's not an alleged, it's there. <laughs> I just feel like libel laws are strong. No, he, people shout him in the street, I hope. <laughs> I, I, I hope. <laughs> I think he's fine with that. I'm sure there's bigger people who have called him a war criminal than us. Um, he's there like, yeah, can you believe Matt Hancock? You're like, well, yeah, you, know, you, don't, you don't get to be involved in this, <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. I've read earlier that we're the millennials known as the me, me, me generation. <laughs> Yeah, but they didn't name themselves that's what that. The, uh, the, uh, that's what parents call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're always named by... Your generation's always named by your parents, you know? What's crazy is, like, 
they invented all the tech mm. that made us more inward looking. Yeah. More self, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The phones and yeah, the... yeah. So you give all these kids this Rate technologies. My face app. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You give all these kids this technology that makes them just glued to themselves. Mm. And then you're like, you're fucking self obsessed. Go it's outside. Like, yeah, it's like, no, you did this. Yeah, yeah you, you did this. You made all this. Your fucking generation invented the personal computer and the fucking internet, and then you gave it to children without researching, like, hey, how will this affect a kid's mind? Yeah. And then you're like, you're fucking selfish. It's like, no, 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 no. We're all just addicted to the tech you created. Yeah. Fuck you. I can't get my kid addicted to heroin and then be like, you're a fucking junkie. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I got them addicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like we're going to have an app where you watch other people live better lives than you. You get judged. People like your stuff so you can measure exactly how much you're liked by your peers. You can also self-diagnose yourself, which is very popular these days with... Uh, I uh, just to be clear, you don't have to say self-diagnose yourself. You can self-diagnose. There we go. Yourself. No, you say yeah. no. No, you say you, you can, can self-diagnose. Self you can self-diagnose yourself. <laughs> no, you, um, say, you say you can self-diagnose. You say fridge. I say icebox. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I found out something interesting the other day. You know, Twitter was going to go bankrupt in 2016. Okay. It was it was collapsing, and okay. then Brexit and Trump happened. And it just went. Whoosh. Really? Yeah. And so it's just funny. It's like everyone who's on there, like, hey, guys, can we just, you know, you know, this whole thing is built on us arguing with each other. Yes. Like, it's only. It couldn't even make money. It can't breathe unless we fucking go. I hate it. Yeah, yeah, Unless yeah. we're full of rage. Yeah. That doesn't and get it's to. it's all these, like, left-wing people on there who are like, I'm here to do, 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 call people out and make the work. And you're like, no, you're just, what you're doing is just flicking another teaspoon of gasoline onto the but actually if, if everyone quit twitter and it collapsed you would take away the rights ability yeah. to like all the trolling all and all the it. influencing but also the world be better like you know when something happens and they actually do the stats when they go oh there's all these you know one guy will go one person will say something fucking horrific about something and they'll go look at this happening you know but a but a but a which it, doesn't mean it's like one I remember person. the women's march. I remember the women's march when hashtag not all men was trending, and I searched down the hashtag, and every single person has gone. I can't believe hashtag not all men is trending when this is about you know this horrific murder that's happened. It went on and on and on, and every single hashtag with hashtag not all men was saying I can't believe hashtag not all men. Yeah, and it's like you're just this doesn't exist. Like one dick has written this, and you're making them. An opinion in the people, and it just builds up both sides. You're arguing sides. with nothing. Yeah. And the right don't want Twitter to end, because they're like, it's just they get to fucking go on there and fight every day, and that's what they love. And then you get left-wing people who get to just sit on there all day and feel kind of like just ju justified. And you've invented this fake war where most of us, the non-commenters, because we're sane, as we're saying on the phone, like yeah. anyone who comments on YouTube or Twitter or anything is the last person whose opinion you actually want. Yeah, because anyone with no one with a brain watches a YouTube video and goes, I'm, "I liked this. I'm going to tell them," or they go, <laughs> "I don't I I'm going like to tell them. It. I'm going to tell them why I liked it, and then underneath, I'm going to say what it could have been better." Yeah, I'm going to neg them a bit because like, I don't want to look like a pussy. I get <laughs> I'll get comments that are like, "Yeah, the joke is great, but your delivery is terrible." Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, th th thank you. Bit loud, da da da. You know what I mean? Like, and they'll go. Oh, this guy's kind of funny. Looks like Jack Black, though, or something. And you go, well, just leave it. Leave yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Just leave it and fuck off. <laughs> There's an anonymous like button. You just go through and, and buy. But then people go, shit. And you go, why did you do that? That's never happened to me, but I can. No, but you know I what get I mean? that it happens to you. On every YouTube video. Does it, it happens to you. It doesn't happen to Is me. it not on your YouTube videos? No, people just say I'm great. It's really... Is there no bad comments? Jody, you must have checked. Con consistently should we, should people have compliment me. <laughs> my special. <laughs> co Listen, if people haven't checked out my special cockroach, which is on YouTube, mm -hmm. Jody uh, directed and edited it. Yeah, very good, And Jody. It, we've, you know, it's, it's. I'm filming my December 2nd, Ace and Nate's Tough Park, London. Yeah. Um, yeah, carry on. It's doing well, mm -hmm. and uh, all the comments have been positive. And if there has been negative comments, <laughs> I've read them and instantly forgot. <laughs> yeah, so no, fair enough. They don't exist. Enough. Exactly. But you know what I mean? It's the psychology of someone doing that. It's fucking, like, they go, I just need to tell them. <laughs> like, I saw a video this female comedian put up, and she, like, obviously YouTube's, like, the worst place for 
women to do comedy because it's like 98% men. Yeah. And she like she had like 300 dislikes. And it was when you could see both, you know, the like and the just dis- yeah. and there's one like and you're like that was that was you. But you just who needs to just go, nah, she needs to know. You know, leave it. Leave her alone. You know, <laughs> it's so bad. No, no, no. Got to tell her. And then the, the that's the kind of, that's the stalker. And then the full-on serial killer is the commenter. Yeah. When he's like, actually. But you hear people like, someone who get caught saying a bad word or da-da-da. And then just someone who, I'll know someone, like a comedian, and they'll go, I think da-da-da. And you go, you literally sat there in your house and thought, I need to tell 25,000 strangers what I think of this. Yeah, that's mentally ill. That's like it shouldn't be treated normally. Yeah, there we go. Moving on. Okay, sorry. No, that's no. I just want you to know how it feels. No, I'm, I'm fine. Moving you did on. earlier on. We move on the subject. Earlier it's on, you said goes. moving on. No. So I just want you to know how the moving on feels. It doesn't feel nice, does it? You think, oh, did I do something wrong? I enjoyed it. Well, do, why did you, you say it? sorry can, can when you I do... said moving on? Because I was apologizing uh, for, for you talking. Make, you making me feel so moving good. on. Oh, I have to move on. Yeah, we do. Okay. What? So the guy got killed in Nicaragua. We then started talking about Twitter and Elon Musk. This podcast is uh, <laughs> shit. Anyway, <laughs> next topic, please. Moving on. <laughs> Pre-human remains are found in Neanderthal Valley and Prussia. Mm-hmm. Now, to be clear, Neanderthal Valley was not called... Neanderthal Valley Mm -hmm. at this time. No. I'm assuming they named it Neanderthal Valley. Post. Post, because they found a lot of Neanderthals in Neanderthal Valley. Mm -hmm. Also, to be clear, Prussia, no longer called Prussia. Mm -hmm. Generally, I believe, Russia. Mm -hmm. The P is now silent. The P... Not even silent, not there. Not there. It's gone. If you look at the word Russia, it starts with an R. Mm. There's it, no P. Oh, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it does. does. <laughs> Fuck me. Did you? This did, podcast isn't shit after all. Did you think? <laughs> you learn a lot. You thought it started with a, a P. Okay. Yeah, Prussia. So, um, so, yeah, they found Neanderthal 1, you know. Mm. It was found. It's a 40,000 year old. If, if fossil, if Putin loses the war, is he going to call him Utin? He'll, he'll lose the right to the P. A forty thousand year old <laughs> fossil, yeah, found in a German cave. Now, here's what we got wrong. Okay, Prussians. Mm. Uh, yeah, they were German. The Prussian Empire. Yeah, this was Germany. I said Russia. I thought it was a block, though. Well, either way, mm. it was in Germany, not Russia. It was. Fa- uh, we have to cut that bit because we would just look too too stupid. Nope. To be, I think people won't even. <laughs> that bit's so dumb. I can't <laughs> actually take how bad that. that's the worst thing we've done on here. What? Just <laughs> Prussia, and I knew, I knew it was because uh, it Prussia's like Austria, Germany, and stuff like that. Fuck's sake! At the top of the P- Wikipedia page for Prussia, it says not to be confused with Russia. This is bad. Okay, go on. Carry on. What was what was going on with the guy? The guy. The the prehistoric dead man they found. Uh, okay, so they found uh August nineteen fifty six, they found a fossil of a Neanderthal. Mm. Which would have been quite confusing, I think. Because if I found a fossil of something that wasn't human but kinda looked human. You would think, these people, are they still around? I'd start looking around, you know. Mm-hmm. I think there's fucking aliens somewhere. Mm-hmm. Now it turns out we all have a little Neanderthal in us. Of course, some as people we just proved more than others. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you thought Prussia was Russia? That's <laughs> the thing is. <laughs> That was bad. They always talk about how, like, the humans killed the Neanderthals. That was, like, the theory for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't think we killed them. I just think we all fucked. We evolved. They didn't think we killed the Neanderthals. They think we evolved. We just evolved. 
Really? <laughs> there wasn't Neanderthals versus human war. It's not Game of Thrones. There, well, the, uh, but there was a period of time. We evolved. No. We evolved from monkeys, became Neanderthals, and kept evolving. There was a period of time where ne- well, humans... The famous Neanderthal versus human war. But humans and Neanderthals were alive we at the a, same time. We had a little ring that destroyed all the Neanderthals when we threw it into a fire. No, but human and Neanderthals... Is that what happened? Human and Neanderthals evolved, mm. were alive at the same time. No, we evolved from Neanderthals. Red, you're wrong. Do you know how, what evolution is? Jody, do some Googling, please. Yeah, I was just doing that. I, I, I was not paying attention in any kind of biology or history lesson at school, but okay. I'm pretty sure Neanderthals are different from Homo sapiens, which is where humans mm. evolved out of okay so we'll just do a google types. and let's see what fake news you come up with yeah neanderthals are an extinct species of ancient humans who lived three hundred fifty thousand to forty thousand exactly. years ago well homo sapiens are modern humans for a long time many people believe that we evolved from the neanderthals but were actually one of their recent relatives and lived alongside he- early humans ah so that's for a long time so just today they found out that no we didn't not know. just today Sorry, my phone's been on silent mode no. <laughs> I, I didn't get the text <laughs> no no you can see why i got that wrong because obviously i've yeah i but so <laughs> Fuck it humans up. and neanderthals coexisted in europe for far longer than thought <laughs> Cave objects suggest modern humans and Neanderthals shared continent for several thousand years. Mm. Well, that's only just been found out. Nope, this was a few it years ago. It was revealed ago. after I'm a Celebrity last night. Nope, a few mm-hmm. years ago. A couple of years. This is 2014, well, 2014. this article came out. Neanderthals I was, overlapped I was with moder- modern humans for up to 5,400 years. I well, Yeah, 2014, I was, I was away that year. Okay. I was in Syria volunteering, so I wouldn't have heard. That's why this is missed. <laughs> yeah, you were fighting on Assad's <laughs> side. You were helping suppress the C- the Syrian revolution. Yeah, you can see why I would have missed it. Um, yeah, because you were fighting alongside Assad and Putin in Syria. And so what's happened with yeah, um, Germany's P- Putin? What's happened with uh, <laughs> with this thing then? What's interesting about the man they found in the cave? Well, what's interesting about it? And he was preserved because of the ice in the ice box, the fridge, basically. Well, no, it was it was, it was a fossil. It, it wasn't. It, they it, didn't find a body, Red. Someone was rifling through their smeg, no, looking, Red, looking, Red, looking for an orangina, they and found, they, they found a. Fossil. They didn't find a body. They found a fossil, bones. Mm. They did. You think? You yeah. think they found like a corpse yeah, of like, the ah. under, a forty thousand year old corpse? <laughs> no. Yeah. It was a body. Okay. Or uh, it was a. Sorry, a skeleton. A skeleton, yeah. Fossilized skeleton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They just find like a couple bones and then they're like... Wow, this is 40,000 years old. What did they do with him? Well, it wasn't popular at the time, but they, they reconstructed him, um, mm-hmm. kind of put some meat on the bones, and then all the scientists took turns fucking him to see what it would be like. Okay. <laughs> and everybody took a turn to fuck the Neanderthal, and at the end of it, they thought, oh, it's pretty similar to when you fuck a dead human. Yeah, and they thought, right, we've done with him. Yeah, Throw and, him away. and that was it. They just yeah. threw him in a pile and burned it, because so, they felt ashamed of what they had done. Didn't want to see him ever again. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, they just felt gross. I get you. So that was really his contribution, was mm. getting fucked by the scientists, mm-hmm. and then burned in a fire because they felt shame. They need to have fun sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't that's it. It can't all be science. It can't all be science. Like, if they found you... Mm-hmm. So volcano erupts mm-hmm. right now. You're at, you're at home. Volcano erupts, takes out London. Mm-hmm. Million years later, some humans have survived, rebuilt civilization. They're combing through the ruins of London. Mm-hmm. They find you. What do you think they would glean about humanity from your life? <laughs> Um, and how you live. I can think of some things. Well, think, no, because wow. Well, skeleton. Wow, ancient humans, based on the apartment this man lives in. Oh, so they find you like, I thought a volcano erupts. A volcano erupts, though, and the lava kind of freezes you and your possessions. It freezes me. Well, like, 
You're, you're the in lava. lava. Fr- freezes me. Like, well, it, no wonder you didn't understand what a fucking fridge was. No, but the lava, That's not what lava does. But the lava does it. You, you, what, lo- do you, lava, what do you think lava is? Lava can fossilize things. It burns it. No, it doesn't burn it. You can, well, lava can, like... <laughs> so the lava's going to fossilize my TV and my delivery order. Yes. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Because what you want me to say is they're going to go, oh, look at this fat pig watching TV doing nothing. That's the answer you wanted, isn't it? And they're going to go, oh, everyone was fat. Ha, 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 ha. When actually, no, it would just disintegrate my bones. There would be no, my TV wouldn't survive lava. It wouldn't. Um, my fridge, on the other hand. You've got a shit TV. <laughs> my fridge, on the other hand, might survive. Your fridge, <laughs> though, the problem with your fridge is really it's just an icebox, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same, same thing. It's just an ice house. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. What do you, I don't know. They go, what, what was this life? But then we live different lives to a lot of other people. Work at night. Don't do anything in the day. Well, write, write jokes, quotation marks. Um, <laughs> go, go on YouTube. Yeah, well, it's um, just a lot of staring at the device. They'd be like, this generation was obsessed with the... Yeah, it's bad. It's very bad. It's not good. That, that's the whole great thing about hopefully Twitter just burns. Let me get back to some normality. All right. In 1856, mm. Battle of Black Jack. This was in Bleeding, Kansas. That's what they called it. It was like uh, a border war. Mm -hmm. Bloody Kansas, Bleeding, Kansas. Series of violent confrontations in what was called Kansas Territory back then. Mm -hmm. It was the prelude to the Civil War. Okay, so this is like pro-slavery, anti-slavery people sort of Fighting, yeah. An anti-slavery force is led by this cool dude, John Brown, defeated pro-slavery forces in Bleeding, Kansas. Mm Mm-hmm. Pretty badass. Mm -hmm. Now, John Brown was an American abolitionist leader. The cool thing about being an abolitionist is like, you're like, ah, I'm an abolitionist. Let's go kill the people who are pro slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'd think of them as peaceful people. Yeah. But they couldn't be. They just had to be violent. Mm-hmm. And he was an evangelical Christian, strong religious convictions, profoundly in- influenced by like Puritan faith, you know. Mm-hmm. And he believed he was an instrument of God, and raised <laughs> to strike the death blow to American slavery, and considered it a sacred obligation. I mean, that's a good cause, but I bet you had bad ones as well. I'm sure. <laughs> Listen, we don't need to dive too deep. I bet he's got a kid. He goes, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. knew my dad very well. He was the leading exponent of violence in the American abolitionist movement. So everyone else was like, we should protest. And he was like, we should blow up some people. <laughs> like, he was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, and he believed that violence was just necessary to end slavery. I mean, which was true. Well, I'm glad he picked this. But if he hadn't picked this, he would have picked something else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know when you see someone on Twitter or something who's, like, on the right side, but you go... Yeah, we talked about this last time. You like to be on a cause, you know? Yeah, but that's great. Get them on the right cause. Yeah, what we did with the Eco Warriors. (laughs) Yeah, get the soldiers, get the psychopaths in the Mm -hmm. army, Mm -hmm. get the activists' brain into the right causes. I did see this quite a good video, Just Don't Stop Oil, in France. They tried to do it, and this giant guy just gets out of his car. (laughs) He just picks this guy up and, like, body slams him to the side of the road, then stands there, so... And starts directing traffic in just this one bit so they can't all regroup. And he just stands there. And so anyone who comes up from Don't Just Stop Oil, he's like, I'll fucking hit you. <laughs> and he just lets all these cars. But I'm sorry, if you were like late for a flight and you saw him, you'd be like, I would literally kiss his willy on the way past him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, yeah, yeah, we all agree with you. But also, get I need to get my flight. out the road. Yeah. <laughs> It's also, do you see that woman on the, she's called like Indigo Beasel Bum or something? And you're like, of course that's your name. You know what I mean? Like, uh, still... why is it always posh, annoying white people? Well, because they're the people with the time to care. Yeah. They're actually, that's true. They're like, I don't have to pay rent, so I'm just going to sit on the motorway. Yeah, well, you know, other people got shit to do. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Anyway, go on, sorry. He, and he carry was... on. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> he, he was... That's what the guy did. He went, go on, carry on, carry on, <laughs> carry on. Cunt. He was dissatisfied with abolitionist pacifism. And he said, these men are all talk. What we need is action. Action! Yeah. And so him and his sons killed five supporters of slavery in the uh, 
Potawatomi massacre, a response to the sacking of Lawrence by pro slavery forces. <laughs> Listen, we're not going to dive in. You no, like you don't want to say the let's word. Let's do a deep dive on uh, Potawatomi. Then he commanded <laughs> anti-slavery forces at the Battle of Blackjack mm. and other battles. Okay, but what's what I like him and his sons. Mm. So he was like, I like that. guys, I am an R. I like great, mm. great. But he's like, I am an agent of the Lord, as are you. Let's mm-hmm. go kill together, boys. It. I. This is going to sound bad. This seems like a more simpler time and for, <laughs> for, for for white guys. Anyway, for sure, white guys. J- but just the like, let's just go out and, and in groups and a fight. You know what I mean? Like, I, I bet you the mental health was better back then. Less suicide. Uh well, I'm not sure about that. Mm. But do you know what I mean? If that was your life and you camped at night, hung out with your mates, and then you were just sort of. Just simpler, simpler times. Um, no commuting. I think he was executed. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Didn't I don't think it ended well for him. No, but if he's the sort of person which he sounds like, he'll care only about his legend and the fact that we're talking about him on a semi-successful history podcast. That would be enough for him. So it was so, worth it. On December 1st, yeah, so anyways, he got captured, and uh, his wife joined him at the jail for his last meal. Mm. She was denied permission to stay the night, prompting Brown to lose his composure and temper for the only time during the ordeal. Mm. He made his will. On the day of his execution, there were large meetings in many cities in the Northeast. And, uh, yeah. Mm. He was executed for what he did. But why? By the South then executed. Well, yeah, because mm. slavery was legal and he and was killing people. killing people. Well, you can. He did. And it, you know, eventually worked. Mm. But he he died for his cause. Well, that's good. I, I that wor- his, what's he called? Worst causes to die for. John Brown. John Brown. Why have we not heard of John Brown before? Well, he was a white dude, you know. And, you know, the good white guys, you're like, yeah, yeah, you're a good white guy, but... Mm. A lot of bad white guys. Yeah, yeah I think mm. I think in certain circles he's probably very popular, but I like you know. I like John Brown. He lived by the sword. He died by the sword. Indeed, indeed. Next. Nah. <laughs> Here's his last words. Good last words too about America. I, John John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away, but with blood. I had, as I now think, vainly flattered myself that without very much bloodshed, it might be done. He predicted the Civil War. Ooh. And uh, he was right. And the fight took a lot longer than John probably thought it would. Mm-hmm. He was a good man, all the same. But again, it's good we got him onto the right cause. Exactly. And I think that's a good way to end. Mm-hmm. The words of John Brown ringing through all of our ears. Let's kill the stop oil people. No, no, <laughs> no. We have to kill the people they want to kill the oil executives. Okay, we need to kill the oil executives. Uh, the, we're, not, we're not saying you should. We're just no. saying that's maybe yeah. what could happen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Mm-hmm. And if you enjoyed that and you think, I want more, I want more podcast. But also, more, your, your chance to be to write in and have your years read out by us, yeah. analyzed, yes, yeah, joked so about. Tune into your year was your year Patreon was Patreon exclusive episodes that are there every week. Every week, thank you very much. Oh, and thank you to our super <laughs> genius patrons, Matthew Spencer. You know we love you. Okay, love you all. Bye. Love you all. Bye. That was another episode of The Year Is. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a review. It all helps. I'd like to thank our producer, Jody, And also, I'd like to thank uh, Josh Weller for our intro music and song. It's, uh, it's very catchy. It's very nice. I'm sure you'll enjoy it at the beginning. So big thanks for Josh Weller. He's on Instagram at Josh Weller. Josh Weller. Follow him and uh, keep spreading the word of The Year Is. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.